This is a crown molding project that we just completed and we think it looks awesome. Today we're going to show you all the steps that were involved. Everything from cutting corners to installing the crown without a helper to the finished work. So if you've never done crown molding, today you're going to learn how. Okay, let's get started. In order to determine how much molding is needed, we'll take measurements of each wall in the room. Start by making a sketch of the room. For most walls, we will take the actual measurement, rounding up to the nearest inch. For any walls with an outside corner, add the width of your molding to your measurement. That's because our crown molding will extend beyond the outside corner. If you're doing a very large room or multiple rooms, you can just add up all of your measurements. Add in another 10% of excess for waste if it's a plain molding, or 15% excess for a molding with details. Then divide by the length of the molding to determine how many pieces you'll need. When doing a small room like this one, you can get even more accurate by laying out where each piece will go on the wall. In many cases, you can use the leftover parts from one cut in another area of the room. It will take seven sticks of our eight foot long molding to cut the 11 pieces we need to complete this room. The pieces are numbered in the order we will install them for the project. Now that we know how many pieces we need, let's go piece by piece through the cutting and installation process. There are several different ways to cut crown molding. Today we're going to use a method that allows us to ignore the bevel feature on this compound miter saw. So if you just have a standard miter saw, you can make any cut shown on this video. Our method is actually backwards from a traditional style of cutting, where you would hold the top of the molding flat on the saw and put the part that touches the wall up against the fence. In order to use that method, we would need to add an extension to our fence to cut anything other than the smallest of moldings. We're going to place our molding in the saw with the lip that touches the ceiling, this part right here up against the fence, with the lip that touches the wall facing out towards us. We do sacrifice slight precision in our angle cuts because we rely on our ability to hold the molding steady, but the cutting goes much faster and our finished work will hide any minor imperfections. And remember this too, the more installation you do, the more your skill level will increase. We're going to cut the right side of our first piece. If you remember, it's a 135 degree corner in the room. Basically, between this piece and the piece that connects to it, we need to remove 45 degrees to make that angle. 45 degrees divided by our two pieces gives us 22 and a half degrees. So to make the correct cut, we're going to position our saw at the right 22 and a half degree miter angle and make our cut. Now our actual measurement for our first piece is 60 and 1 inch. So on the bottom of the molding, we're going to measure that amount and make a pencil mark. Since we're cutting the left side, move the saw to the left 22 and a half degree miter angle. And we make our cut. This molding has a four inch height, which means it comes down four inches from the ceiling. Before we install the molding, put a mark four inches down on the wall every couple of feet so we know where the bottom of our molding will hit. If your ceiling is uneven, it's best to use a laser level to make your marks on the wall. Now if our room had crisp 135 degree angles, we'd be all set with this piece. Notice however that they have a radius. We could still install this piece as is but it'll fit better to the wall if we carve out a bit from the bottom of the molding in a similar shape to the radius of the wall. Before installing this first piece, we're applying just a thin bead of adhesive along the part of the molding that comes into contact with the wall and the part that comes into contact with the ceiling. Adhesive isn't required, but it allows us to use fewer nails, reducing the amount of time we spend when doing our finish work. Don't use too much or get too close to the edge or it'll seep out and make a mess when you press it into place. To help secure our crown in place, we're going to use a nail gun with one and a quarter inch brads. Our air compressor is currently set to 100 PSI. We'll put a nail in every 12 inches alternating from top to bottom. Okay. 
All right, we're ready now for our second piece. The left side of the second piece is going into that 135 degree corner. We'll set our saw at the left 22 and a half degree miter angle. Oh, it's already set there from our last cut. Hold the molding in place as discussed, and we make our cut. Now, the right side of this piece will butt up against our third piece. With wood, you might do a mitered corner at a joint, but the polyurethane is pretty uniform, so we can just butt the two pieces together. It's a lot easier. Now what we're gonna do is set our miter to zero. We're gonna take our molding, and we're gonna flip it around and make about a sixteenth of an inch cut on the edge. Reason being is sometimes our molding gets a little bit rounded, and we want a nice clean edge so that this piece of molding will marry up nice and clean with the next piece of molding. I highly recommend having a friend or family member close by to assist you putting up your pieces. It makes the installation a lot easier. But for this piece, we'll pretend there's no one around to assist you and take a look at a helpful trick. On the wall, in the spot where our helper would have propped up the molding, we'll put a nail on the pencil mark that we made earlier, four inches down on the wall. We're not worried about the hole because the finish work we do will cover it right up. Put a little bit of adhesive on the joint between the two pieces, as well as some on the back of the second piece. We lift our piece in place and press it firmly against the wall, resting the opposite end on the small nail. Now we're going to shoot some nails into the crown to secure it in place. We won't put any nails in the last 18 inches or so, so that we can make minor adjustments when the third piece butts up against it. Oh, and we don't need this nail anymore. Now we're ready for our third piece, which goes into a 90 degree corner. For a 90 degree corner, we can either do a mitered cut or cope the molding. Coping is a popular technique, so we'll demonstrate using this corner. When we cope a corner, one side of the molding extends all the way to the wall. So for piece three, we just make a straight cut at 17 and 3 quarter inches with our miter set at zero. We put adhesive on the joint and also on the back of the molding. And it's ready to go into place. Make sure that the seam is aligned and put a few nails in both sides of the molding to secure it. We finished the first step for a coped corner. Now we need to go cut our fourth piece. Our cut on the left side of piece number four is going to be the same whether we are coping or doing a mitered corner. We set the saw to the left at 45 degrees and we make our cut. Now here's where there's a difference from a normal mitered corner. We take the molding and using either a coping saw or a utility knife, we remove the unexposed portion of the profile of the molding. So when you're done coping, you shouldn't be able to see any of the yellow polyurethane when you're looking straight down at the molding. Now, the right side of this piece is going to be butting up against another piece, so we want to make sure that it has a nice clean edge. For now, we are just test fitting this piece to make sure we've removed enough of the unexposed area. Looks good, so we are ready to add some adhesive and nail this piece in place. Remember, we are not nailing in the last 18 inches of the molding, so we can make adjustments when we butt it up against our fifth piece. For this fifth piece, the right side is going into a 90 degree corner. We have the option of doing a coped corner like we did before, but let's practice doing a regular mitered corner instead. For the mitered cut on the right side of our piece, slide our saw to the right 45 degree miter angle, position the molding in place, and we make our cut. The left side of this piece is just butting up against piece number four. So we're going to have our miter on the saw set to zero degrees. We're going to lay the molding flat on the saw and make our cut. We're going to add adhesive to both the back of piece five and the joint where it will butt up against piece four. 
Remember, we didn't nail in the last two feet of piece number four, so we have some room to make adjustments and she'll be able to make this look seamless. Once it looks good, we secure it in place with our nail gun. For the sixth piece, both sides are going into a 90 degree corner. For the cut on the left side, we're going to slide our miter angle to the left at 45 degrees. And we make our cut. Our wall measures 75 and a quarter inches, so we measure along the bottom of the molding and we make All of our corners to this point have been inside corners. Now we come to our first outside corner and it's an outside 90 degree bull nose. The bull nose is this rounded part. If we had a crisp corner, we would just turn the corner with two pieces. We could still do this with a bull nose corner, but there'd be a small gap to fill and we can make it look a whole lot better if we do a small transition piece. Let's look at pieces seven, eight, and nine. Piece number eight is our transition piece between seven and nine. It will just be a small pie shape piece. Typically on a 90 degree turn, we just make two 45 degree cuts. By adding in the transition piece, we have four cuts that will make this 90 degree turn, the right side of piece number seven, the right and left side of our transition piece, and the left side of piece nine. 90 degrees divided by our four cuts will give us 22 and a half degrees per cut. The next thing we need to know is where to measure to on the wall. For measuring piece 7 and piece 9, we're going to be extending the molding out beyond where the radius starts. Instead of confusing you with the exact method of calculating the extended length, we're going to take a shortcut that will give us results good enough for a DIY project. Start by putting a dot on the wall where the wall starts to curve. Add a dot at the midpoint of the curve. Now put a line in the middle between these two dots. We'll write a seven below that because this is where piece seven will come out to. For the right side, we'll put another dot where the wall starts to curve and add a line in the middle between that dot and the midpoint of the curve and mark that as nine because that's where our ninth piece will come to. For piece seven and nine, we can go ahead and measure from the wall to our marks to get the length for those pieces. Here's the equation for determining the length of the transition piece. You can memorize it, or just remember that the length at the bottom of the transition piece should be 83% of the radius. So on a 3 quarter inch radius like this, the transition piece should be about 5 eighths of an inch. For a 1 inch radius, it would be about 13 sixteenths of an inch. Now that's enough fun with math, let's get these three pieces cut. We're going to use the leftover piece from our very first cut to create piece number seven. The left side of the piece is going into a 90 degree corner, so we're going to slide the saw over to the left 45 degree miter angle and make our cut. Now we need to cut the right side. If you remember, the cuts going around that bull nose are all going to be set at 22 and a half degrees. We also have to remember that this is an outside corner and not an inside corner. When cutting an inside corner, the bottom of your molding will always be longer than the top, like we just did on the left side of this piece. When cutting an outside corner, it is the top that will always be longer. Either way, the measurement that we take from the room and mark for our cut will be at the bottom of the molding. For the right side, we're still going to position the piece in the saw the same way we would for an inside corner. But for the angle, we're going to move it to the left miter angle of 22 and a half degrees. Okay, as you can see, the top of the molding is longer on the right side, which is what we need for doing an outside corner. Now let's go ahead and cut our transition piece. This is probably the most difficult cut of the day because it's so small. We can use any scrap piece that we haven't designated for another part of our project. The larger, the better. 
We're going to start on the right side of the molding by moving the saw to the left 22 and a half degree angle and make our cut. We'll then mark the molding with our 5 8 inch measurement at the bottom. Even though our transition piece is small, the reason why we selected a decent sized scrap piece for this is that we want to keep all 10 of our fingers. We're actually going to hold on to the part of the molding we're going to be removing. Then slide our miter saw to the right 22 and a half degree angle and cut off our transition piece. The transition piece should look just like this, a small pie shape. On our last piece for this section, the right side is going into an inside 90 degree corner and the left side is going to be at the outside bullnose corner. Starting with the right side, we're going to move the saw to the right 45 degree miter angle and we'll make our cut. For the left side of the piece, we transfer our measurement onto the bottom of the molding and then set the miter angle to the right at 22 and a half degrees. Then we make our cut. This will make our top of the molding longer than the bottom, which is what we want. We're going to start by nailing piece seven on the left side. We'll leave the right side free so we have room to adjust it when we connect our transition piece. We'll nail up our transition piece in just a moment. But first what we did was put some adhesive on the sides where it will meet up with pieces seven and nine. We also put some adhesive on top. We add adhesive on our ninth piece and put it in place. Once everything lines up, we can go ahead and secure all of piece nine, the transition piece, and the right side of piece seven with nails. We're almost done, just two more pieces. Piece 10 is very short. We are going to use our longest remaining scrap piece and trim the right side straight as it will butt up against piece 11. The left side of this piece is going into a 90 degree inside corner, so we're going to set our miter saw to the left 45 degree miter angle and make our cut. Before we go back inside, we're going to make the cut for the right side of the 11th piece. It's going into an inside 135 degree corner, so we're going to set our miter saw to the right 22 and a half degree miter angle. And we'll make our cut. We can now add adhesive and get piece 10 up in place. For now, we'll just nail in the corner, leaving the right end free so we can adjust it to fit well with piece 11. Hey, we're almost done. This last piece will take us back to that first 135 degree corner. If you remember at the start, we had to remove a bit from the back of our pieces to fit well in our rounded corner. We'll do the same with this piece, mark it 1 16th of an inch long, so it'll put pressure on the seam and go make our final cut. Our last cut is the left side of piece 11. We'll make a straight cut on our mark where it will butt up against piece 10. Okay, we've completed our installation of the crown molding in the room, and all that's left is to caulk our lines, fill our nail holes, and paint the moldings. For finishing tips or videos on other molding projects, visit the Learning Center at Uticor.com.